Welcome back to Tap Out Radio for this special Wednesday edition with Shamar Bailey. Mr. Bailey, you have a big fight coming up this weekend at the Battle in the Bayou. Uh, you're going to be fighting Evan Dunham. Let's let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Would you consider this your biggest test yet since you've been in the UFC, or would you consider just getting into the tough house and all of that your biggest test? You know, I, I wouldn't consider this the biggest test of my of my career, and um, you know, that's how I that's how I prefer always um, taking a step forward each time you step into the cage, and not don't definitely don't want to be going backwards in competition and challenges. So, yeah, I would consider this uh, a step above everything else I've done. Okay, okay. Now you know he's a dangerous opponent. Uh, have you brought someone into your camp that could uh, mimic his style or anything like that? Yeah, I mean we definitely got a few guys that um that uh, mimic his style. Not only that, um, and our, our training guys I feel are actually better than than Evan. And uh, again, it's just a matter of me doing uh, what I'm supposed to do, not only in training but when it counts the most. Um, you know, in the octagon under the lights. Okay. Oh well, no. Who do you train with? Tell me about these guys that are better than Evan. <laughs> uh, that's no disrespect to him, by the way. But um, I, you know, I've got some good guys that that probably are better than him in, in individual um, disciplines, um, in, in additional, including uh, Chris Lytle. Um, uh, you know, wrestlers, Muay Thai fighters, uh, jiu-jitsu artists, and then um, you know, also at the privilege of training with uh, Ben Henderson out in uh, Arizona. Uh, leading up to his fight with Jim Miller. So um, I consider him a step above uh, Evan Dunham for sure. Okay, okay. Now, in your weight division, let's talk about some of the guys that, that are impressive to you, that are putting on shows and are making you sit back and say, wow, that dude is badass. At some point in my sure. career, I want to fight him. I want to showcase myself against him, et cetera. Uh yeah, I I love to fight a guy like Clay Guida, but my boy Ben Henderson has has earned the right, and I'm happy for him to to fight that he gets that fight. Um, you know, at this point, I I love the 55 pound division because um, a lot there's a lot of wrestlers that know how to stand and bang as well, so um, I, I, those make for exciting fights, you know, on the feet and on the ground. So I uh, don't want to get too far past uh, what I need to do on Saturday, but uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of good matches at 155. Okay. Okay. Now, when you when you said stand and bang and impressive fights and everything, what do you feel is the most important component in making an exciting fight? Uh, if, if that's your main focus to make an exciting fight, I think, uh, you know, it, the funny thing is, it's what who defines exciting. You know, what I mean, do the fans define exciting? Do the fighters define exciting? Everybody has a different definition of what exciting is. So, what's your I definition think, uh, of exciting? <laughs> Um, getting your hand raised at the end of the fight, that's exciting to me. <laughs> that's, that's a good answer. Uh, if you were watching someone else fight, though, what would you define as exciting and what components do you want to look for? You know what? I mean, it's, I think it's uh, because I'm a student of the sport and I'm actually one of the people that actually fights. Um, I, my definition might be different than others. You know, it's just somebody that's imposing as well on somebody else and, and uh Either it's dominating, I, I like to see someone dominate, and I also like to see a back and forth, whether it's on the feet, whether it's on the ground, it doesn't matter. It's just a change uh, of hands, change of control, and, and like I said, somebody imposing your will. That's what uh, you know, wrestling in college and high school taught me, is just impose your will on your opponent. Okay, okay. Uh, with Evan coming off of a loss, I think maybe two losses, mm -hmm. where do you see the weak spots in his game? You know, I... I wouldn't say that Evan has any weaknesses, you know. Um, there's definitely some holes in his game, but, you know, everybody has, has weaknesses or holes in their game, and then they have things that they do really well to um, to keep their opponents from, from attacking those things, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to give anything away, but, you know, we, we definitely see a few, few things that we can go after, but, again, it's up to me to, to make sure I do those things. Okay, okay, fair enough. What do you, okay, let me let me ask you this then. Uh, it's same question posed a different way, and maybe I can get something, squeeze a little drop out of you here. <laughs> Where do, what do you think the keys to victory are in this fight? How about that? Can I get so a little something victory, there? Yeah, yeah. I think um, conditioning. Um, he's got he's got really good conditioning. I think it's going to be a high pace fight. 
So I think that's going to be, uh, be it. And, and uh, Evans tends to like to fight people that just stand right in front of him, um, whether he likes to, you know, that we we'll go with that. He likes to fight people that just stand right in front of him. So um, I would I would say you got to be in really good shape. It's going to be a high pace fight on the feet, on the ground, wherever it goes. Um, you, you don't just want to be laying on top of the guy, and uh, you don't want to just be standing standing in front of him, you know, against the cage. So we'll just go with that. Okay, okay. Uh, last question here. This is going to be a, a little different. <laughs> I've heard some things about you do, contributing to underprivileged youth and so on, and I'd just really like to hear about that because we all know you're a firefighter and you contribute publicly to your fellow man all the time. But this is a little different. You're, you know, that's your job, that's your career, and this is your career. But now you're you're going above and beyond the call, and you're donating more of your time to to the public and to to the kids. So could you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, just um, more than anything, I can't take any credit. Just uh, being a part, being with, around people that have a vision and. Um, for kids and, and being able to use the sport of MMA to see the kids off the street um, in the same way that basketball has or football um, or boxing and, and just, um, you know, teach them the disciplines of the sport. And so there's an organization I'm involved with called MMA uh, for Youth Foundation. Um, and they're on Twitter. And, and then, uh, again, my head trainer and Chris Lytle have, um, have been fortunate enough to get a hold of a grant to help start a it's called Indy Pal uh, Club and they actually already are working with kids with boxing and some other sports to get inner city kids off the streets in Indianapolis. And uh, we're going to start an MMA gym in Indianapolis to, for the same purposes. So uh, it's pretty excited and, uh, you know, um, see how, see how things go. Awesome. Awesome. That, it's, I love that. I love to hear fighters giving back a little bit. That's great. Um, I lied. I do have one last question, and I've been asking this and uh, with with some good response. So hopefully you give me a good response, too. What's the last movie you saw, and did you like it? <laughs> the last movie I've seen in the theaters is yes. uh, the, the Warrior, or Warrior, um, and uh, it was awesome. Actually, probably going to go and see it again tonight or, or sometime this week. So, Tell me a little bit about it. I've seen it already, uh, you know, by the way, but without, I, tell, tell us a little bit about it. Without giving too much away for people that haven't seen it, it's it's just um, one of the few movies, I think, where you can watch it and you can say that makes sense. That's how it really is. Um, you know, the acting is pretty good. The, the action that takes place in the cage and in the gym is, is as close to realistic as possible. And the, the sequence of events, you know, uh, of the movie, um, it's just it's real moving. You know what I mean? There's there's not a part in it where you're like, oh, you know, that that never happens or anything like that. So everything flows together from the acting to um, the the plot and to the way that the movie's carried out. I I thought it was really well put together. Did you cry? Because Joe Rogan and uh, Mayhem <laughs> Miller have both come out and said that there were points in the movie where they teared up. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that any tears fell from my eyes, but there's probably tears in my eyes, you know what I mean? So, really? Yeah, yeah. Me too. Uh, just, just, so, just so we're clear, I, I teared up a few times too, so I just, I just like to <laughs> no know that... No tears fell, for the record, no tears fell. <laughs> just because no one saw them doesn't mean they didn't fall. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, Shamar, I want to thank you for your time, and I want to give you 60 seconds here and let you plug whatever you want to plug, tell people how to find you, websites, Twitter, Facebook, uh, sponsors, anything you'd like to say, the floor is yours. Yeah, I just want to thank you guys for having me tap out uh, radio. Um, you guys are awesome. Thanks to my trainers, uh, training partners back home in Indianapolis, also my nutritionist who uh, helped me with this, uh, this crazy uh, weight cut and uh, got me feeling good. And um, just uh, you can find me on Twitter at Shamar Bailey, on Facebook, Shamar Bailey One, and uh, my website, www.shamarbailey.com. And uh, once again, thanks to guys for giving me the strength to do what I do. And uh, make sure you guys watch on September 17th uh, as we, me and Evan Dunham uh, battle it out uh, in the octagon. Awesome, awesome. And for those of you that have been playing the uh, MMA musicians game, we like to call Shamar Shalimar Bailey. That's uh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you roll with that. 
Awesome. Okay, folks, uh, that wraps up our Wednesday edition. Thank you for listening, and tune in tomorrow for a live episode with Alan Belcher and Cody McKenzie. Thanks.